I am Lamont at large. Today, I am at the Forest Hill Cemetery here in Madison, Wisconsin once again, and I'm here to talk about a story about a man that was pushed just a little too far. I'm here to talk about the revenge of Meng Ju Wu. So here's what we're gonna do for this video. This is a story that I seen on Forensic Files and I made it a point last year to come and visit the grave when I got a chance to get up to Madison. So you can either stop the video now, go to the description box, the episode of the Forensic Files where I seen this story on will be there. You can watch the video first and then kind of fast forward to the grave or I can simply give you a quick synopsis of the story of what happened. So Mengju Wu, was a foreign exchange student. Uh, he was originally from Taiwan. Uh, he was the son of very uh, wealthy parents there, and they sent him to America to get an education, and they chose a University of Wisconsin for him to go to school. Uh, he went by the name Mark, which is what a lot of uh, foreign students, especially Asian, they will just pick any old American name to kind of go by just so to make the assimilation process a little bit easier. Anyway, so uh, so Meng came to Madison, uh, was enamored with the American culture, uh, girls, cars, everything. But one thing that he was enamored with about the American culture was American sports gambling. Uh, he quickly became a uh, gambling addict, uh, losing all kinds of money. And while at school or in the bar scene or what have you, he met up with a man by the name of Jason McQuiggan. Jason McQuiggan was a self-described, uh, guess you could call him a bookie. Uh, he was, he fancied himself some kind of a, uh, a, a sports better uh, connoisseur, if you will. Uh, people would pay him a little bit extra to make bets for them. He claimed that he knew a lot about uh, sports betting, handicapping, all this and that. A lot of stuff like that I simply do not know about. Now, if you notice to your left, you'll see an empty patch of grass. Uh, you might see people right there playing golf. There's a golf course right next to the cemetery. Anyways, going back to the story. So, Ming hooks up with Jason. And over the course of several months, makes a lot of sports bets with Jason. Um, him being so addicted to sports gambling, he doesn't even know the names of some of the teams that he is making bets on. But Jason reassures him, hey, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I know all about sports, this and that. So over the course of several months, uh, Mang loses tens and tens of thousands of dollars. And in the interview with detectives, Mang even said one time he lost $15,000 on a single bet. So with all that losing, one day Mang uh, goes up to Jason, makes a, another uh, high little wager, and he says, uh, hey, let's do this, let's do that. So basically he bets on a sports team parlay. A parlay is when you bet on several different games. Uh, you can bet two games of hockey, two games of baseball, two games of football, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You could bet anything. So he makes a bet, and this parlay was really, really weird because all of the games that he bet on he won and the last game was a baseball game i believe it was between the pirates and the indians and mang is waiting up like all hours of the night because the game goes into the 15th inning and the team that he bet on to win actually wins so mang gets up all excited he just won seventeen thousand dollars seventeen a thousand dollars you know, you can imagine him just saying like, whoop, whoop, I can't believe I won. So the next day he calls Jason. He goes, hey, where's my money? And Jason says, what are you talking about? He goes, what do you mean? What are you talking about? You have my money. I just won $17,000. He tells Meng, I didn't make the bet. And Meng says, what? What do you mean you didn't make the bet? So he later on goes to Jason and he says, uh, stop playing with me. I want my money. And Jason says, I, I didn't make the bet. He goes, I swear to God, I didn't. So Mang constantly pesters him. Where's my money? I want my money. Finally, Jason pulls out a gun and points it at Mang. And he basically gives him a couple of expletives. He says, I'm not paying you S word. And... Mang is like, okay, this guy's ripping me off. 
I want all that money. And he's keeping it. So he believes that he made the bet and he kept his money. So basically he feels he got robbed for $17,000. So he goes to uh, Jason one more time. And at that time, Jason was with his roommates, Dustin Wilson and Daniel Swanson. Swanson. So according to eyewitnesses, the three guys, Jason, Dustin, and Daniel, get out of the vehicle and start calling him every expletive, every racial epithet you can possibly think of, you know, all the everything, you know, cussing him out, just threatening him, saying they're going to beat him up, so forth and so on, and then they left. So, Meg says, okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. So on June 26, 2003, Meng knocks on the door, the apartment of where Jason and his friends live, and nobody answers the door. So he breaks in, searches the house for the money, tries to open a safe in the back, it's locked, and he notices Jason's gun. He grabs the gun and he leaves the house. Uh, later on, he comes back again, breaks in, notices that Daniel and Dustin are on the couch sleeping, and like, almost like a professional killer with no remorse, he takes the gun while they're sleeping and shoots and kills both of them. Now you got two dead guys, so Meng waits in the apartment for Jason to come home. Finally, he comes home around 2 a.m., sneaks up behind him, puts a gun to his head. He goes, he goes, where's my effing money? And Jason, real panicked, probably sees his friends dead. He's like, oh, my God. He says, I don't have your money. I don't have your money. He marches him to his back room and makes him open his safe. He opens his safe and there's nothing there. Maybe a thousand dollars at best. And that's it. So Mang says, oh, okay. And then he kills him. And, uh, Quickly, the investigation, Verona police, that's the city uh, outside of Madison here where the murder occurred. They start doing their detective work. They go against, they, they talk to witnesses and they the witnesses tell them about a, an, an argument that they had with an Asian student. They're looking at this Asian kid. They're, they're like, yeah, right. This kid, he's not a suspect in a murder. Coincidentally, a week prior to the murder, Jason had got into an argument with his downstairs neighbor and had struck him uh, in the face. And basically, uh, they got into a fight. So the neighbor was a suspect, but he was quickly uh, ruled out. And eventually, they got enough evidence when they started focusing on Meng. And they arrested him in November of 2003. He was uh, in New York on his way out to Taiwan, prob probably never coming back at that time. I don't know now, but then they had no extradition treaty with the United States, I believe, when it came to uh, capital murder. Not capital murder, but just murder in general. So he almost got away with it. The, the, the authorities, they arrived, caught him as he was about to board the plane to Taiwan, extradited him back to Wisconsin and uh, locked him up in the county jail out here. And he was uh, charged with three counts of first degree murder. And uh, he, that's where he sat in jail. He sat in jail for about about 15 months. And then on uh, in January of 2005, uh, the uh, deputies came to check up on Meng and they found him hanging in his jail cell he took his own life and so this is the grave of Jason McGuigan uh, June 14th 1975 to uh, June 26 2003 I would advise you guys even if you didn't uh, watch the video and you just listened to me explain this story as quickly as I can I would advise you guys to go ahead and watch the story anyways. And let me tell you this. I will say this about uh, this situation at hand. To anybody out there listening to this video or you're listening to me, don't ever, ever think that somebody isn't who they might be or might not be. It's easy to see that Jason and his two friends, Daniel and Dustin, looked at this guy Meng as just 
what a lot of people look at, uh, you know, Asian dudes as just like kind of meek, uh, cowardly. They ain't going to do anything. You know, a lot of times Asian people, they're very quiet. They keep to themselves. They don't start trouble more times than not. You know, they don't get involved in affairs such as this. So they probably thought like this guy ain't going to do anything. I'll, I'll kick his butt. I'll do this. I'll do that. Unfortunately, those three young men and Jason lying in, in front of me, they thought very wrong. Uh, Meng was not the one to be played with, and for that, it cost Jason his life. Never put anything past anybody. You see a kid that comes from a rich family, that comes from a, uh, a, a good background, from Taiwan and you think that he's a a coward or he ain't gonna do anything well guys think again think again and um, you know just uh, four people dead for all for sports betting it's so odd it's so weird and families torn apart I don't understand it but if we could learn a lesson from me talking about certain stories in cemeteries and if anybody could take anything away from uh, my videos at the end of the day if you can learn something learn this no matter how big and bad and tough you think you are you think you're a gangster you think you're dangerous you got a gun you got uh, you got you know you, you think you, you think you're some kind of like just thug Whatever it is, that, whatever words I'm trying to come up with without cussing, uh, always know this. There's always somebody bigger, badder, tougher, meaner, five times the killer you'll ever be. And unfortunately for Jason, uh, he did not know that and see that in Meng. Meng was not the one to be dealt with. I often suspect that Jason was just taking Meng's money and not even placing the bet. So I, I honestly do believe that Jason did not make the bet for Mang. He probably wasn't making the bets for a long time. He probably was just taking his money and robbing him. So this video is not to disparage this guy, but I, that's how I feel. I feel he was just doing that. And, and when you mess with the wrong people at the end of the day, it's going to cost you your life and you're going to be sitting right here. What the, you know, you're going to be sitting right here. And I say this guys, live your life, be good to everybody. Um, treat people the way you want to be treated at the end of the day. And I, and I rest, Sure, I that is a, a model that I do stand behind. I do stand behind. Anyways, rest in peace to this young man and uh, buried alongside his father. Okay, guys, uh, Lamont at large. I'm signing out from the Forest Hill Cemetery. I will catch up with you on the next vlog. Peace out.